Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we gotta get into this part one of this Real Housewives of Potomac reunion since they waited to the damn last episode in the reunion to finally have a show. Now, before we do, uh, let me let me just give y'all my disclaimer that ain't got nothing to do with this review. Y'all might hear some buzzing and some saws because I got another neighbor that's cutting down some trees. Now, they ain't right outside my window, but, but y'all might hear it, and I'm just letting y'all know because I got to get my review done. I ain't got time. And, 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 I'd like to say that, you know, I had some trees to cut down in my own yard and me my mom and my brother shout out to my family we came together and we did it ourselves you can't tell me i ain't paula bunyan anyway they ain't got nothing to do with nothing i'm just <laughs> very proud of us before we get started please be sure to like share comment and subscribe if you have not already and of course i gotta shout out my super thanksers thank you so much to yvette greer tanya fuller and oba i truly appreciate y'all and on cash app shout out to amber e i loved your message thank you so of course the reunion kicks off like it always kicks off we see these behind the scenes looks and them going into the dressing rooms and peaks of what's to come in the reunion. Well, as they're taking the stage, Giselle is the first out. Let me tell you, Giselle looked the best she ever looked. I don't know if she got a new glam squad. I don't know if Cal went and took some continuing education classes. I don't know what happened, but this is the best she ever looked. I mean, and Giselle is a beautiful woman, but it's just like, because she's beautiful, sometimes she just throw a look together and I'm here. Candace came out next. Now, Candace come out pissed off because ain't nobody else on the stage yet. About why did I rush? Girl, girl take your seat. Now, Candace's look was my absolute favorite, hands down. Y'all know she worked my nerve, but when you look good, you look good. Robin came out next. I, Robin, Robin's look was probably my least favorite because it just did nothing for me. It was like she threw on a black dress and a blonde bob and said, let's go. And usually I actually like Robin's style choices, but something about this was just like, let's just get it over with, give me my check, let me go. Now, Ashley came out next. I don't know where the hell they got this wig from that Ashley got on, but she looked like something straight out of Hairspray the Musical. That wig was so high up off her damn I mean, I just uh-uh. And again, she's a beautiful girl. All of these women are beautiful women. But that wig, that wig was not it. Mia came out next. Now, I actually like Mia's look. I thought she looked very pretty. Now, she was followed by Wendy. Wendy was my second favorite look. I don't know. Her, her and Candace running neck and neck for me. Wendy looked amazing. Then we saw NECA come out. Now, now is it me? Or is NECA giving Nigeria Monique Samuels? Like something about her, if you glance real quick, looks like a Monique Samuels silhouette. I, I don't know. And then we saw Karen. Karen got new face, new body, new hair. She comes out with her little 27 piece. She got her short haircut on. Andy said, I love this. She said, you like it? He said, I don't like it. I love it. I mean, I imagine, oh, y'all got the same cut. But it is beautiful on Karen. I love the shortcut. Now, what I didn't like about it was the blonde tone that she had. It was more of like a silverish blonde that almost came off gray. And I feel like if it were more of a golden tone, it would have been brighter and warmer. But either way, I thought it was beautiful on her. So Andy finally got them all seated on the stage. He gets the reunion started off and he starts with his icebreaker questions. You know, he go around and hey, so and so and how you doing? What's going on? So don't, don't you know this man got around to Ashley and asked her, when is the divorce? Mia said, I'll be divorced before her. Now that's one time Mia ain't told a damn lie. Now Mia is one to talk while she's sitting on the stage with a damn boyfriend and a husband. So they get into the reunion questions and the reunion starts on a very nasty note where they're talking about how for some reason, the only time they can truly get along and they can bond is when they talk about nasty sh so we had to see all the clips that I'm talking about swallowing and ugh, and Karen and her wet dream. Ma'am, why they subject themselves to this kind of degradation is beyond me. These are big grown ass women. Candace, I believe is the youngest woman up there and she's 35, 36. And all y'all can bond over is talking about what y'all be doing with y'all mouth, with y'all man, just uh, uh So then they got around to asking Karen, why is it that when Robin asked you how many sexual partners you've had, you had to pause and think about it because your ass been married forever. This lady said, because I had to count the wet dreams. If you having that many dreams, you might need an exorcism. That's probably an incubus, ma'am. Tell whatever lie you want to tell. She be having mans that Ray don't know nothing about. She can't keep track of how many mans it is and she ain't gonna tell us that bullshit on TV. Just carry on. Robin had the sheer audacity to pipe up and say, so in other words, you can't keep track of how many sex partners you've had over the last five years. <laughs> Karen said, no, Robin, that would be one. Oh, I don't know how Robin stayed on that couch after that. I'd have quit my damn job party over. Well, since Robin had so much to say, you want to pipe up so bad, let's go ahead and talk about you and your bad marriage. So Andy starts Robin's questions off for her segment by asking her, 
first did Juan watch any of the season? This girl said no. Not this man done curse you out on TV for calling home crying and he won't even watch the sh with you. So then Andy asked her, do you still stand by your belief that Juan never cheated on you with the girl from Canada, with Coach Bree, or anybody else that we may or may not know about? She said, well, I can't say anything for certain. All of them looking at her like the f At this point, it's hard for me to even be mad at Robin about her bullshit. I'm sad for her. Do you realize how low your self-esteem, your self-worth, your view of self has to be for you to choose to subjugate yourself to someone who treats you the way that Juan treats her? So that you, I mean, to the degree that you have to get on TV and I cannot say for certain that this man who openly disrespects me is loyal to me and I'm willing to hold on to that at any cost to say I have somebody. Do you know how low you have to be? Well, Robin goes on to say, you know, I can't say anything for certain, but based on what Juan has told me about the girl in Canada and things that I heard after the fact, I have many reasons to believe what Juan is saying, girl. So Andy addressed the group and Andy asked how many of you believe Juan's story. Karen said, none of us believe Juan's story. Wendy said, but Robin believes it and that's all that matters. I guess if she want to believe in the tooth fairy, the Easter bunny and Juan, that's her damn business. They got their own cheating line husbands to deal with. Now, Giselle trying to tell her friend is some bullshit. Giselle, I, I got one little question. Let me ask you. When Juan said that Brie is a beautiful woman, did that not bother you at all? Robin said, no. I mean, because she is a beautiful woman and the point he was making is that if she were not not a beautiful woman, then it wouldn't have had the reaction and the backlash that it got. So I understood what he was saying. Well, Karen, Karen didn't bring her patience to the damn reunion with her. She said, look here, Robin says she don't give a fuck. So when it come to Juan Dixon, I don't give a fuck either. And so many words, I got my good wig on this tight ass girdle and I done got all kind of surgery and shots and shit to sit up here on this reunion. I'll be damned if we waste our time talking about her and that lying ass man. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I feel Karen. I'm not about to sit here and go up and down this rabbit hole of bullshit about you and this man that you insist on defending when he will drag you and disrespect you to your face on TV. If you don't care, I don't care, so it don't need to be a conversation. But Robin jumps up to say, no, what I said is I don't give up about other people's opinions. All right, well, that's all this is, is other people's opinions. So keep it to yourself unless you got some other shit going on in your life. Since you insist that you ain't hiding your marriage from the world, you hiding the world from your marriage, go ahead, take your marriage put it up in the closet, leave us alone with that bullshit and you better come up with a storyline. So Andy goes on to ask her, do you feel like Juan was supportive of you during filming? She said, yes, he showed up, he answered questions. Andy said, but he's not showing up tonight. Robin said, that's fine. Andy said, he does not have a basketball game. Yeah, that bullshit you like to sell us about why your husband ain't showing up on this job? We ain't buying that shit. We know he ain't got no damn job, so he for damn sure ain't got no basketball game. Robin said, no, he doesn't have a basketball game. He just declined to show up, and that doesn't mean that he doesn't support me. Then what does it mean, Robin? Karen ain't with the bush. Karen said, why isn't he here, Robin? Wendy piped up on some real woman to woman. She, like, listen, we ain't friends. I don't like you like that. You don't like me. But here's the real. Wendy says, so you mean to tell me he doesn't realize that you're going to be under fire tonight because of his actions and that he should be here to have your back? And Robin is over there now. No. Wendy says the least that he could do as your husband is come stand behind you and say, you don't have to take all those bullets on your own. I can take some too. And that's real because if this man wasn't a part of her life, this questioning wouldn't be a part of her life either. This shame wouldn't be a part of her life. So the least that he could do is come to address the embarrassment that he invited into your life. You fucked up, fucked me over, embarrassed me in front of the world. And then you can't even show up to take the heat? Uh-uh, you got to get out of my kitchen. And Andy addressed that with Ashley. He said, Ashley, well, you know, Michael was the same way for a long time. He didn't want to show up to the reunions. She said, yeah, he didn't want to come to the reunions. He didn't want to be under fire and have all these questions and allegations against him. But once he was actually caught cheating, he did show up. Girl, just so, okay. So then Andy brings up a viewer question. He said, we got several viewer questions about people concerned that you don't see anything wrong with the fact that Juan clears out his phone and his DMs. This girl said the man just don't like a cluttered phone. Let, let, let me tell you something, Robin. That's some utter bullshit. That is a clear sign that a man is cheating and his silly ass don't know how to delete parts of the evidence. That 
is a man that's living a whole other life and you are just his house manager. And he asked, well, do you have the password to his phone? She said, no, and he doesn't have the password to mine. Girl, he don't want it. I don't know if they just waiting on them kids to be grown, but this is some bullshit. I don't know how you suffer through this and call it a marriage. I don't know why Andy insists on asking these women about what they believe about Robin and Juan's marriage because it does not matter. Robin is a happy hostage, just leave her be. But he asked them after all y'all have heard, do y'all, you know, has it changed your position? Do you believe in it? Candace said, listen, for me, it was never about whether Juan was cheating or not because we know that. She said the issue for me was that Robin hid her life, hid what was going on in her marriage from us and from the show while she simultaneously is demanding that we share details of our lives. Robin said, well, hold on now, wait a minute. Yeah, I might've hid mine, but when did I demand that y'all share anything about your marriages? Candace said, well, the example that comes to mind immediately is when we were in Mexico last year, you were demanding that Karen share details about what was going on in her life. And of course they played the clip. And it was of Robin telling Karen that there are pictures being circulated of Karen with a blue eyed man at a bar in Las Vegas. Is, is that the man from the wet dreams? Robin said, well, that was after she brought up something about Juan holding hands with a woman in Georgetown. So I didn't demand anything of her before that. No, but what you did in an effort to deny what was going on in your life is amplify what you heard was going on in somebody else's. And she says that that whole thing with all these women was not going on while they were filming. So she chose not to talk about it because it wasn't relevant. Robin, you a damn lie. You chose not to talk about it because you do not want to have to confess to the world that you know that this man is less than faithful to you, that he is less than respectful to you, and this is what you choose. Because the truth is, that's what it comes down to in these bad relationships. And I'm telling you from something I had to learn, that it's not about, oh, why would he do this to me? The question becomes, why do I tolerate this? Why am I accepting this? Why do I not demand better? And that's the part that you don't want to have to admit to the world. That's why you want to hide it and make it sound like, oh, we've been together all these years and we rekindled our marriage and we have this family and we're trying to raise these children. No, the fact of the matter is I have an insecurity so deep that I would rather hold on to a man who will publicly disrespect me than to choose myself. Karen said, girl, Robin, please, you had a whole story going on. I did not have a whole story. Candace said, yes, you did. And you know you had a whole story because not only did you choose to hide it from the show, you took the story that you hid from the show and sold it on Patreon. Girl, you have to play with somebody else. So Andy asked her, don't you think it would have helped if you got ahead of the story? It would have been better damage control to own it and get in front of it and say, hey, me and Juan had a blip. Um, I'm just telling y'all some shit went on and don't worry about it when you hear about it. Robin said, I mean, I wasn't thinking about getting ahead of a story. Andy said, but how? Because you said that you were waiting on Karen to bring it up. Robin is the kind of person you can put all the evidence in her face and she will sit there and deny it till the very end. Karen said the smart thing to do would have been to get ahead of it, just like I did when the story was breaking about raised taxes back when this show first started. She said, I hosted a press conference with no press. She said, I made it a little humorous, but I got ahead of the story. The thing is, when you choose to spill your own tea, you disarm other people who think they can weaponize your tea against you. Robin and Giselle about, well, of course you got ahead of the story because it was in the paper. And Juan was all over the damn internet. What is y'all talking about? See, this, this is when Giselle just be leading her friend to hell. Robin lives in delusion. That's just the bottom line. I, I can't deal with this no more. So then child, this is where she started to get messy. Andy goes to read a viewer question and they bleep the name out. Now they didn't bleep nary a curse word. So I'm trying to figure out why they bleep this name. So Andy goes to read the question and the question is Candace is mad at Robin for not sharing details of her marriage. But it was Candace that said back in season three that she and Chris have the right to choose what they want to share. So how is she upset at Robin? Candace said, well, first of all, I won't be answering any questions from bleepity bleep 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 because that's Robin's friend who is a blogger who she shares inside information with. I said, excuse me, who? Candace said, not only did you share proprietary information about me with him, you talked about your friend Giselle 
hell in the group chats. Robin said, no, I didn't. Candace got the spin around, pulled out some envelope with the biggest PowerPoint presentation I've ever seen in my life. This girl got screenshots the size of her body. So Candace gets to presenting exhibit A. She shows a screenshot of a group chat where apparently Robin had sent a video of Giselle and Juan talking after Giselle confronted Robin about Juan yelling at her. So apparently Robin sent this video to these bloggers or somebody in a damn group chat and said, I'm thinking about posting this. Does this look like somebody that's mad? This really pissed me off. Candace says, so you were in this group chat talking sh about your best friend. I said, oh, this shit is getting messy. Now Robin can't answer to the accusation. All she says is, Giselle, are you mad? Giselle said, no. So Karen asked Giselle, well, Giselle, did you know about it? Giselle said, yeah, she and I talked. Robin said, yeah, I told her about it. No, y'all are committed to keeping a united front when it comes to taking down Candace and anybody else that you deem an enemy. But what is going to happen is once you run everybody else off, that united front is going to break down and y'all are gonna turn on each other and never fails. So the next viewer question to Candace was, after watching the season back and the conversations that you had with Robin, do you still believe that she conspired with Giselle and Ashley to malign Chris in an effort to protect Juan. So of course the three of them, oh my God, you can't be serious. Candace said, I am serious. I do believe that Robin knew that if she kept talking about my business, it would keep her business under the table. And I do believe that there was some element of good cop, bad cop going on where Giselle and Ashley can be over there doing that. And I'm a play good cop. I'm gonna act like I'm on her side. Like I don't have nothing to do with that. And I'm not for that, that I believe Chris, but it was an effort to keep her business out of the public eye. So Andy said, okay, well in the here and now, I wanna ask you, what do you need from Robin to move forward? And Robin, I'll pose the same question to you. Don't you know Candace start that damn crying? Giselle said, not tears. Candace said, fuck you, girl. Giselle bust out laughing in the girl. Giselle has the maturity of a 14 year old. Now listen, I get Candace is insufferable. She works my last nerves, even when she start that damn crying. Cause what is you crying for? You done cursed everybody out and now you crying. But Giselle works my nerves because she behaves like a child. Her children are more mature than her. Even Andy told you that that's kind of mean. And what she doesn't realize is it gives that you are very bothered. Candace bothers you. Candace triggers you. Candace gets up under your skin. That laughing in her face was supposed to me. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how you know. It tells me she lives rent free in your head and you are looking for any and every opportunity to stick it to her. And I have my charm mama up here looking a damn fool just trying to hurt this girl and get a reaction out of her. Just have a seat. And I believe that Giselle is threatened by the idea of Candace and Robin resolving whatever issues they have between them. So Candace tearfully explains that what she needs from Robin is acknowledgement. She said, because what Robin did not only hurt me, it hurt Chris because Chris considered Robin a friend. So Andy turned the question to Robin and he said, what do you need from Candace? Robin said, I don't really need anything from her in the way of an apology. Clearly she thinks I plotted on her husband and if that's how she feels about me, I don't think she should be around me. Well, that's typical. I don't expect Robin to take accountability for anything. For her to take accountability for doing this bullshit in terms of being in somebody else's business in an effort to suppress her own business is going to also require her to acknowledge that there was something to suppress that there is some sh going on that I didn't want in the public eye. And she is so deep in her denial and delusion that that will never happen. So since they ain't gonna be friends, Andy just moved on to what we really wanna know. Did Juan find a job? She said, no, Juan hasn't found a job. He actually decided to volunteer at their oldest son's high school. He's a volunteer coach for the varsity basketball team where he led them to their first victory in 31 years. Mm -hmm. So Andy asked Robin, what is it that you would like viewers to know that you feel like they may not understand about your marriage? I'm gonna give you the floor. She starts out by explaining that they've been in each other's lives for 28 years. And over the course of long periods of time when you are in a relationship with people, you go through shit. Now, this is true, but let me tell you something that my sister told me years ago that changed my complete outlook on relationships. I was engaged. I knew this was not going where it's supposed to go. I just say, uh-uh. So I'm having this conversation with my sister about my relationship and about how I don't think this is right. I don't think we need to be married. I don't think this is going where we think it's going. And she was like, well, if that's the case, let it go. And I said, but 
what about all these years? I mean, we put in all these years into this relationship. And I mean, my sister said one of the biggest mistakes I think women make is wasting more time because you've already wasted time. She said, because you have spent all these years in the wrong place, you're going to waste more time. I will hope hmm. that thing changed my life. I said, you know what? She right. I'll be damned if I'm going to stay somewhere that I know I'm not happy, somewhere I know I'm not meant to be. God is showing me through every which a way he can. Baby, this ain't what I got for you. And I'm going to waste time because I already wasted time. It's, it's a waste of life. Robin goes on to say, you know, it's really up to you and whether you want to thug it out with this person. But we want our family. We want to be each other's best friends. Well, Robin, where is it? This man treats you like a nuisance. But you up here telling us this bullshit about we want to have our family and he's my best friend and we're each other's biggest supporters. No, you're not. Ashley pipes up to say, well, are y'all happy together? And Robin says, we are. We are happy together. And you can just see the lie on Robin's face. Robin doesn't believe the shit that Robin is saying. The issue is she doesn't know anything different. Juan is a part of her entire adult history and she does not know a life apart from one and she rather be with the devil she knows than to go into the unknown she's over there but i mean when you decide that you're in it for the long haul you're really in it for the long haul well you stay there with that stockholm bullshit and then she had the nerve to come out of nowhere about y'all should really do a two-hour special on Juan Dixon's life. It's really intriguing. Girl, if you don't go find him a job somewhere else, save that pitch. Ain't no damn body interested in Juan Dixon's a Juan Dick girl. So they move on to Karen. They show the whole Karen and Giselle segment about how Karen and Giselle been frenemies forever and they struggling to be friends. Then they ask Karen about her face. They have a viewer question that asks Karen, did she get a facelift because she's been posting some really snatched face pics to the gram? She said, yes. Why, yes, I did. She said something about she got some deep planning or whatever the hell else done, and I look like myself, just refreshed. Well, okay, girl. So they get to asking Karen a bunch of random ass questions. They're asking her what she means in her tagline for the show about she's the fence and they just ride her. She says she's Switzerland. She always in the middle. Of sh they always want her to fix them sh between them. Then they asked her, how did she convince her aunt to sell her her grandparents' home in Surrey that she's turning into a bed and breakfast or something? She said, well, I, I had to gain her trust and then I had to write a check. Yeah, that's the part. She had a check. So then they asked Karen about that lie she told during the season where she was having the ladies to come out to visit her family land that she had just bought. And she claimed that she was going to pick who could come by pulling their names from a fishbowl because she couldn't have everybody there at one time because of insurance reasons. They said, now, you know you a damn lie. Karen said, well, no, I wasn't really lying. What it is is the house is 104 years old. And when you take these ladies somewhere, they don't stay put. In other words, they was gonna get to fighting and tear my shit up. And I needed to make sure I had enough insurance to cover them in the bush. So Andy turned the questioning to Giselle and he said, you blamed Candace for death threats that you received after last year's reunion. Why didn't you confront her at any point during this season about receiving those threats? Giselle said, well, first of all, I was told that she would be talked to. That means I turned her ass into HR. Candace said, well, I want to know how is it that I'm responsible for people being crazy enough to threaten her? Giselle said, well, as a result of the color of my skin, I was getting a bunch of messages saying, you're a colorist. I'm coming to kill you and your children. I just, what? Let me tell you something people gonna learn on this here internet. Y'all ain't but an IP address traced away from getting the dog shit slapped out of y'all or going to somebody's jailhouse. Why would you get on the internet to threaten somebody's life behind a damn TV show? I don't care how much I dislike nobody on this damn TV. I be damned. If I'm gonna get on that, I'm, I'm coming to kill you. What? And people better learn to be real careful about the energy that you project. My grandmama used to say, when you dig one ditch, you better dig two because the one you mean for me just might be for you. Giselle said, and then when I watched this season, it was, oh, Giselle, Giselle, Giselle's the devil, Giselle's an imp. Candace said, all true. Candace goes on to say, I think that everybody up here has received some sort of a threat or another. And I feel like it's dangerous and unfair for her to conflate me having an issue with her to random people on the internet 
at threatening her. So Andy said, well, let me ask you this because that sounds real good. But are you on Twitter and all the other social media sites liking and reposting the tweets when people are saying this crazy sh Candace said, well, well, I've liked some of the tweets, yeah. Andy said, well, then that does involve you. You're encouraging the bullshit. Candace said, well, it's no different from her going on her podcast talking about me. Giselle said, well, we only talked about her husband one time, and that was because it was on the blog. Candace said, well, they were sitting on their podcast laughing, joking, adding sauce to a whole lie. Robin said, nobody laughed, girl. And so the screenshots are photoshopped. Candace, I don't know what screenshots you're talking about. Robin said, the screenshots of your husband's limp peen and all of the voice memos that they shared back and forth. Everybody said, what? Candace kept saying, I don't know what you're talking about, Robin. What? What? My thing is, how are you more informed on what's going on with other people's men than you are with yours? But carry on. Candace said, the woman y'all are talking about is a liar. Andy said, oh yeah, didn't that lady come out and say she made the whole thing up? And you can see Robin and Giselle just deflate. Robin said, but she, she retracted that. Girl, shut up. The whole group turned on Robin. They said, no, that lady don't have no credibility. She ain't got all her marbles. Karen said, that lady's a damn lie. And we are all above anybody who would lie on us. Take that bullshit and go on up the street. So Andy tried to wrap this segment up by seeing if he can bring some sort of peace or resolution between Candace and Giselle. Candace said, I have seen and heard enough. She said, when we started this reunion, you charged us with being honest and open and doing what we could to move forward. She has expressed that she has no interest in moving forward. So it is what it is. Andy said, well, I feel like y'all have both said a lot to each other. Is there anything that both of you can be accountable to each other for so that we can try to move forward? Giselle said, well, yeah, I was informed last reunion that they didn't like the sneaky link comment and I apologized for it. Oh, Okay, so that's you telling us you already took ownership? Andy said, well, is there anything else? Because you had already acknowledged that. We already established that. Giselle said, I haven't done anything else to her. I haven't talked to her. So Andy goes to the next viewer question, which is about a tweet that Candace made about Giselle. When they had the whole episode about sexual assault, Candace tweeted that it was triggering to watch a woman who accused someone of sexual assault talk about sexual assault. The viewer said, I thought it was sad that you made a powerful moment about your issue with Giselle when she never accused your husband of sexual assault. Candace said, well, yes, yeah, she did accuse him of sexual assault and she accused him of it multiple times. Giselle said, no, I did not. Candace said, you're mincing words, but to insinuate that my husband made you go into a room that sexual assault. So Andy goes to ask Wendy, Wendy, would that hold up in a court of law? Giselle said, well, Nick is the lawyer. I don't know why you asking Wendy. Giselle lives to keep shit up. That's her stirring up that drama between Wendy and Nick. Now Wendy irritated by he asked me because he's the host, but yeah, Nick is the lawyer. So Nick said, well, no, I don't think that's going to hold up because it's not actually sexual assault. If he didn't actually do anything to her I, and she's not saying, well, he touched me or he tried to make me touch him, then I don't think it's sexual assault. I think it's some form of coercion to say he made me go into this room. And Mia stepped in to say the same thing. She said, Candace, I don't think it really amounts to sexual assault. Well, Candace is adamant. She said for her to continuously say that my husband made her go into some room, he forced her into a hotel room and made her close the door. Giselle kept saying, I never said forced. I never said he made me do anything. They had to play the clip because yes, you did. She said in the confessional, he made me go into this room. She said it this season. And my thing is, if Giselle had a genuine concern with Chris's behavior, why didn't she go to the powers that be on Chris the same way she seems to be insinuating that she went on Candace? Because she says that after she got all these threats, Somebody told her Candace was going to get a talking to. So who was it that you talked to that was supposed to go talk to her? And why didn't you bring it to their attention that you had this concern about Chris's behavior back then? Karen stepped in to wrap the whole thing up and she said, well, what I will say is that words do matter. How you say things matter and you can't make certain insinuations and then leave it up to other people to come up with what the end of the story is. She said the words themselves are not sexual assault, but I do understand where you're coming from, Candace. Now, Candace is adamant it is sexual assault. I, ne I need you to go talk to a lawyer, baby, because I don't think so. Candace said the implication of what she's saying is sexual assault. Karen said, well, it's not so much the implication. It's that she left others to draw a conclusion. Candace said, and they did. Giselle said, no, there was no implication. All I said was that the man asked me to go into a room. NECA said, well, can you acknowledge here and now that he did not 
sexually assault you in any way because I think that's what she wants from you. Giselle sitting up there, but I haven't lied about a thing. Girl, ma'am, just okay. One thing her and Robin gonna do is lie till the very end. Just take it and go to hell. Here's the thing. The apology, the acknowledgement that Giselle refuses to give Candace is going to be the thing that compromises her own credibility. You can think it's cute and funny to laugh in her face about saying all this sideways shit with the sideways sh that you're implying is nothing to play with because things like that happen to women. Women are coerced into spaces where they are taken advantage of and you are using this, making some shit up as a weapon and it's not okay. Now it's one thing to say she got a hope for her husband that's that's one thing hey your husband out here trying to slang that brown thing but it's a different thing to imply that someone is trying to force you to do something against your will and then to sit up on tv about your blameless and you haven't lied about anything when you have been proven right here in this moment to be lying about what you said you said i never said he made me and they played the clip the whole group is telling giselle you did say in a confessional interview that he made you no i didn't no i didn't yes you did with your lying ass. See, this is what happens when you start weaving webs of lies. You can't remember the, sh the truth doesn't change and it doesn't need help. So now Giselle still won't take ownership for what she said or how she said it. Her response is, well, what about all the things she, she tweets about me? Candace said those are consequences for the bullshit you said. Wendy tried to wrap up the crazy. Wendy said, okay, Candace, listen. If Giselle holds herself accountable, what are you willing to hold yourself accountable for? Because everybody worry about their damn self. Candace, so I can hold myself accountable for my response. Giselle finally pipes up and says, well, if I said made, if I said that he made me, I, I didn't mean that. That was not correct. He asked me. He did not make me. Well, thank you so very much. But that still ain't good enough for Candace. NECA said, Candace, do you accept that? Candace said, sure. So Candace then turns around to take accountability for her word choices. She said, I know that you took exception to the words that I used to describe you. And they played the clip of her calling Giselle a privileged white looking. Ass. She said, I, I apologize. Yeah, because that sh did. She said, I should not have used those words to describe you. I am sorry that your children have received death threats. Now, I don't take accountability for those death threats, but I am sorry that it happened. So they decide to leave that there. Thank God, because I'm tired. So then they shift over to Karen and Robin. Andy started out with, now, Karen, you claim to be neutral. She said, I am. He said, but you do seem to always be coming for Robin. So he asked if Robin and Karen can say three nice things about each other. Good luck. So Robin said, well, Karen is witty. Karen looks great for her age and she's a great mother. So Andy said, well, Karen, can you say three nice things about Robin? Robin said, no, she can't. Karen said, you don't know that. I'm not you. And immediately starts shading the lady. She said, well, she's a good friend to Giselle. She said, Robin is also very intelligent and she's very strategic with her woe is me cries, but overall she's a nice person. Karen is so damn ridiculous, I can't. So Robin asked Karen, she said, tell me this, if your friend took to social media and went on Watch What Happens Live and was telling the world that you were in cahoots to tear down their marriage and malign their husband, you, you mean to tell me you wouldn't be upset, you wouldn't feel some kind of way? Karen said, well, that's already happened to me. Robin said, no, it hasn't. She said, yes, it has in some form or another. And I'm still smiling with all you bitches. And yeah, it has, because y'all kind of dragged Karen's marriage first because she was around here when this show first started about she's married to the black Bill Gates. And y'all made sure to let everybody know that the black Bill Gates owes some money to the government. Karen said, it has happened to me, but I got over it because I know that the assignment is for us to bring the best of us to the viewing audience. Robin said, well, see, when it comes to Karen, this is not her even riding the when it comes to me, she cannot look at things objectively. Karen said, well, that's because I got a problem with you. You full of shit. One day you on my side, the next day you putting a boombox on the table trying to blast business. Since they ain't gonna have no resolution, they decide to go have some lunch. They break to go to lunch and you see all the ladies going back to their dressing rooms. Well, well, Mia goes to her dressing room and who's in her dressing room but her soon-to-be ex-husband, Gordon. Well, Gordon and they minding his business while she looking at her phone about her man been FaceTiming her back to back to back like something wrong. I said, what the hell? When she said the man keep calling her like something is wrong, Gordon in the background, he's probably just concerned about you. What the? 
Don't you know Mia call her damn man in Gordon's face? She and her face turned him in a hey babe. And he, oh, you look so good. And this is a mess. And after she's showing the man how she got her legs and her thighs and everything out, she said, yeah, and Gordon's here. Gordon pops up. Hey, how you doing? This man saying, bro, what's up? I see you got that black on. Yeah, they got on matching outfits because they still got matching names. That's that man wife. I don't know what in the trifling love triangle is going on, but this is some new bullshit to me. Now, after that messy bullshit, when lunch was over, they went back to the stage and the first thing they jumped into was Mia's business. Yeah, let's talk about you because this is some shit you got going on backstage. So, of course, they played the package of all of their mess and drama from Gordon losing his company to Gordon losing his damn wife. So, Andy starts his line of questioning with Mia by asking her, where do you live now? Because, I mean, if you between these two men, you living with one of them, she said she does have a a penthouse apartment she said it is the smallest space she's ever lived in but she is the happiest she's ever been she said gordon currently has an apartment in charlotte but he's getting ready to move across the street into his own condo and then they got into the history of she and ink she said that they are high school sweethearts and they actually had a picture of them look like they went to prom together and mia was a very pretty girl i don't know if she's done you know a bunch of stuff with her lips and fillers and all that stuff but she need to leave her face alone because her original face card is a very nice. So Andy asked, well, if y'all were high school sweethearts, how did y'all break up? And she said, well, he decided to move to Atlanta to pursue his career in radio and she wasn't willing to relocate. She had her own job and she was in school at the time. So that's what broke them up. And eventually the distance between them is what kept them apart. Andy said, so eventually you found your way to Gordon. And after you got with Gordon, this entire time, were you keeping in touch with Inc? She said they've kept in touch here and there. And there was only one occasion where they did actually rekindle the flame he said was that while you and Gordon were together she said yes it was Ashley looked like me what the f is there a reason you are so freely and openly admitting this on tv y'all ain't divorcing he gonna whoop your ass in court and part one of the reunion came to an end with Wendy saying hey listen listen before we even get off into this Mia let me tell you what Gordon is saying because I don't know how much you know but Gordon is going around saying that at some point Inc., the new boyfriend, showed up at Gordon and Mia's house trying to take their oldest child because he believes that that child is biologically his. The fuck? This shit is the wildest shit I have ever heard. Mia looked like, well, damn. Andy said, well, does Inc. believe that Jeremiah is his son? Mia said he does. What in the trifling hell? Ashley said he still thinks that? She said, yes, Ink thinks that Jeremiah is his. And why is it still a question? Why wouldn't you go get a paternity test and figure out who your child's father is? You don't think your child deserves to know who made him, who he came from? Who? What is this? See, it's one thing to live them wild, swing of lifestyles and do any damn thing you want to do. But when you start compromising your children, that's a problem. You know, I actually ran across a story on TikTok a while back where a lady is trying to figure out who her father is because her parents used to be swingers. And this lady has tested, I believe, hundreds of men and still has no idea who her father is. That sh ain't right. That sh ain't fair because you want to live some kind of reckless lifestyle that you leave this child to try to figure out who they are and where they came from. Child, it's too much for me, but we'll hear from Gordon next episode, I guess, because it looks like they're going to bring the husbands out and they can bring this fast enough. But that's it. That's all. And I ain't got no more. I got to go rest my nerve. Thank you so much for coming down here, listening to me and letting me get this off my chest. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the meantime, until next time, just like every time, I love you and I mean it. Bye.